السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو ریئیکٹ کنگ میرا نام ہے تنزیل اور میں آج آپ کے لیے لے کے آؤں ایک نیو ویڈیو اور جس ویڈیو پہ آج میں ریئیکٹ کرنے والا ہوں تو گائز اس کا نام ہے دا ترکش وار آف انڈیپینڈنس یہ ایکچولی 1922-1923 کی بات ہے جب سلطنت عثمانیہ کو توڑا گیا تو اس کے نتیجے میں چالیس سے زیادہ ممالک جو سے تھے مارز وجود میں آئے تھے تو گائز آج اس پہ دیکھتے ہیں ریئیکٹ کرتے ہیں تو دیکھتے ہیں کہ کیا اسٹوری ہے ساری کیسی ڈاکومنٹری ہے سو آپ کو بھی پسند آئے گی اس ویڈیو کا اوریجنل لنک جو سا وہ میں نیچے ڈسکرپشن میں بھی دے دوں گا تو آپ بھی جا کے دیکھیے گا اور گائز آئے بغیر کسی دیر کے اسٹارٹ کرتے ہیں The Turkish War of Independence 19th century was a time when so much changed in the world. One of these important changes was the gradual destruction of empires. One of these collapsed empires was the Ottoman Empire. When the Ottomans were defeated in the First World War, like many other empires, they made their exit from the stage of history. For the victors of the First World War, Anatolia and the Middle East now were suitable areas for colonization. They also entered the territory of Anatolia after the Mondros Armistice Agreement signed by the defeated party on 30th October 1918. The first occupation took place at 8th of November with the acquisition of Mosul and Turkey's invasion has accelerated step by step. The British, the French and the Italians seized many places particularly the citrates, to suit their interests. According to the agreement, all means of communication and transportation of the Turkish government and the arms of the army were confiscated, and they were demobilized and retreated. The purpose of these operations was to prevent a rebellion from the Turkish people, Turkish government or army, while the occupations continued. The French invaded Chukurova and the western part of the southeast with the Armenian legions, The British seized the Straits, important raw material points and ports. Also, Italians placed troops on the south and west coast of Anatolia. In additionally, the Antoine states were also considering to establish a large Armenian state in the east and a Kurdish state in the southeast. They promised Greece the western part of Anatolia with the Paris Conference. The people who were disturbed by the occupations had already expressed their attitude towards the enemy in the southern regions and began to fight with the French and Armenians. On the other hand, the situation that mobilized the country in general was on May 15, 1919, when the Greeks stepped into Izmir. That seemed to be the red line. The occupation was protested all over the country. The British were trying to calm the Istanbul government by saying that the occupation was temporary. During the occupation, experienced commanders of the country held secret meetings in Istanbul. The favorite of these commanders was Mustafa Kemal Pasha, who was remembered for his achievements in Çanakkale. Mustafa yeah, Pasha, Mustafa as a on. lieutenant colonel, had promised to be a brilliant general, despite the defeat of the country in the First World War. Mustafa Kemal Pasha, one of the army's most active commanders on the battlefield, and the rest commanders of the Ottoman Empire did not favor silence against these invasions, and during the reorganization of the remaining Ottoman army, Mustafa Kemal was sent to Samsun on May 16, 1919, as an inspector. Mustafa Kemal Pasha, who set foot in Samsun on May 19th, with his trusted friends and officers, knew that the fire of freedom within the Turkish people would lead them back to independence. On 19th of May, Mustafa Pasha began to implement the plan of liberation in his mind. The expansion of the occupation by the Greeks resulted in the Turkish people fighting by forming militia forces in the west. After the resistance started in the south, the struggle of the Turkish people also started in the west. On the rise of occupations and the desperation of the Istanbul administration, Mustafa Kemal understood that something had to be done, and for that, on June 22nd, Amasya Circular was issued by Rauf Orbay, Commander Refet, Ali Fuat Pasha and Kazım Karabekir Pasha. This circular was the first official document of the Turkish War of Independence. Now the people were openly invited to oppose the enemy, the Allies. Although the British removed Mustafa Kemal <coughs> from his post, they couldn't prevent him from leading the people. The call was answered by the public and among the remains of the Ottoman army. Mustafa Kemal and his friends who passed from Amasya to Erzurum gathered a congress here, stressed the need to resist the enemy. At the same time, the commander of the Ottoman troops in Erzurum 
Kazım Karabekir Paşa stood next to Mustafa Kemal and was one of the biggest supporters. Mustafa Kemal passed from Erzurum to Sivas. In September, another congress was held with the participation of participants from all over the country and the decision taken at Erzurum Congress gained a national identity. Now the Turks were determined to resist the occupation. With a decision to gather the closed parliament in Ankara, Mustafa Kemal opened the National Assembly on April 23, 1920 and was elected president of the Anatolian government. The Turks then rolled up to their arms to maintain the resistance with a regular army rather than militia. The Turkish War of Independence was organized to fight against the enemy on three different fronts. Regular troops in the east managed to defeat the Armenians while the west was trying to form a regular army when the Greeks' occupation continued. Thus, towards the end of 1920, the Turks secured the eastern sides. At the beginning of 1921, while the newly organized troops under the command of Ismet Inonu fought with the Greeks' army, while the Turkish militia forces on the southern front harassed the French and the Armenians and brought them to the point of withdrawal. In July 1921, the Greek army defeated the Turks during the battles and threw them to the east of the Sakarya river. Now the Greek army was financially and morally supported by the British. Seeing this as an opportunity, the Allied powers wanted to push the Greek army into Ankara and force the Turks to accept the Treaty of Severus. Also the withdrawal of the Turks gave them hope. Things weren't going too bright for the mainland government. The enemy was very close to Ankara and could not be stopped. The Istanbul government tended to see Ankara as responsible for what happened. If the Turkish army in Anatolia could not stop the enemy, things would be worse for the Turkish state than calculated. The president of the Ankara government, Mustafa Kemal Pasha, mm -hmm. took over the command of the army and Battle of Sakarya, which started at August 23rd, ended with the victory of the Turkish army on September 13th. This was a turning point for the Turks. After this great victory, the Italian and the French realized that the Turks would win the war and they gradually began to withdraw from Anatolia. The Ankara government reassured itself with its victory and instilled great hope in everyone for salvation. The Greeks lost their ability to attack after their defeat and went to defense to protect their territory. But the Turks did not want to leave even one enemy in their homeland. They made the necessary preparations for a year and this time they would fight to the end. On 26th August 1922, the Battle of Dumlupunar started. The war ended on 30th of August with the overwhelming victory of the Turkish side. From this date, the Turks attacked on a wide line and drove the Greek army towards the shore. On 9th of September, Izmir was liberated from the occupation and the Greek army, as the Turks called it, got poured into the sea. After the withdrawal of the occupation forces on the shores of the Marmara, in October 1922, a ceasefire agreement was signed between the Allies and the Turks. Thus, the War of Independence ended with Turkish victory, and the Straits and the Thrace were given to Turks without a fight. Mustafa Kemal Pasha, who led the people in this war, turned to diplomatic victories after lifting the Sultan. Ultimately, the Republic was proclaimed on 29th of October 1922. Mustafa Kemal Pasha, who later took the surname Atatürk, was elected the first leader of this new regime and state. Nice. So guys, this was the video of the Turkish War of Independence. So guys, this video was very informative. So I hope you liked it. If you liked it, you will have to like it. And if you like it, you will have to understand. So we'll see you in the next video. Until then, keep your mind. Allah Hafiz.